everybody. Timo here. This episode is part of the Gitcoin Climate Solutions series. Please head on over to gitcoin.basin.global, check out our grant for the round, and then click back to grants, and you will see all the awesome climate projects. There are 40 individual projects and 10 bundles. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them and welcome to the episode. Welcome, Sev. How are you today? Doing great. Thanks for making it. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here. Cool. It's a live show. But this Basin Wide is an, an effort to try and bring in like more non-Web3, like crypto people, blockchain people, and show them that, that we're building real climate solutions, real nature projects, real carbon removal solutions, u- using just a new form of technology. So we're branching out to other audiences. We're trying to minimize the slang words. So if we do use a slang word, Sev, let's, let's try and define that. And then just a quick plug that uh, Basin.Live is, has been made possible by the Climate Collective and it's brought to you by Basin.Global. So we appreciate that support. But welcome, uh, Sev Nightingale from Ecolabs and several other projects, will, which I could list them all over the place, Refi Now <laughs> and uh, Demeter and uh, be a bunch of stuff. So let's, why don't you just tell everyone what you're up to, Sev, and we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here, and uh, thanks for putting this on. Really appreciate you meeting and bringing people together, and especially uh, appreciate that last message around trying to de-jargonize message and de-jargonize the space and not, not uh, necessarily relying on all of the Web3 terminology and trying to simplify things. So I will keep that in mind as I speak about what I'm working on and try to uh, yeah simplify the terms. More or less, what I have been spending a lot of time this last about a year since I've really been January of last year that I really started to dig into the regenerative finance space. And the one thing that I found really inspiring and that I resonated with was the collaborative spirit of the space. And so I've been doing a lot to try to support that and create and hold space for collaboration. Also recognize there was a couple friction points that could use some help in coordinating how we solve those uh, and reduce that friction. One is just on making sense of the space. How does one onboard and if they want, basically there's a lot of projects out here being developed on creating ways to value impact on the planet. And because they're emerging, because they're innovative and there's a lot of fragmentation. It's very confusing on exactly how to plug in and, and start taking action and onboarding into those ecosystems. So that's one sort of big friction point is just simplifying that that process of getting started. And then the other big one is that the way you can prove that positive impact is happening on the ground, especially when you get to small scales where you're only operating on a small farm of less than a few hectares of land, proving that you're having a positive impact in various ways can be really difficult and challenging. And the one way that can be remedied is through leveraging a lot of the new ways of using technology and automation to make things to paint a clear picture of what's happening on the ground from multiple different angles. So that could mean using a smartphone and capturing photos on the ground. That could mean light images. That could mean drones flying over property. That could mean sensors that you place on the site. It will continuously upload data about things like soil moisture or nutrient levels, things like that. And so that's the other friction point that I'm focused on trying to solve. And Essentially, a lot of collaborating with these, it, trying to put all these puzzle pieces together to try and try to create solutions for kind of those two broad categories of problems and challenges. And that's in a nutshell, a big overview, what I've been focused on and working on. Sev, there's two things that really speak to me. I saw this on your website the other day and you just touched on it with collaboration, but one is regeneration requires collaboration. Right. So I love that. And then our mission is to make regeneration an occupation where anyone can make a living healing our planet, restoring ecosystems as a regenerator. So that's Magenta and I were just talking about that, the people aspect of this and like, how do you get paid to do that kind of action rather than just doing it for free? Right. I'm a volunteer or I care about it. And just so I do it because of my beliefs and values, but how do you actually 
earn a living? What are these incentive structures, right? That exactly yeah. that and try to think in systems and in incentives and in in how you make a really significant scaled impact on sort of humanity and the world is that you change the systems that we're operating in and you, you, t- you help tweak the incentives. And if we can design incentives around re- the idea of, of regenerators and in such a way that one can make a living, have a career, that's a career path for anyone who wants to, to just get paid to restore ecosystems and have a positive impact on our planet and our species as a means of, yeah, of making an income, uh, that that would be a beautiful future to live in. Because then if those are the incentives, then essentially that should always trend towards m- making some meaningful press on some of these problems. Yeah. And I think that's probably a good lead in to your app that you're building. Like how do people actually, how would they onboard or where would they start and how do you envision that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the right now we've started work finally because essentially this past year has been a lot of making sense, a lot of starting collaborations, and uh, not a ton of like actual development. Now we're starting a development on some of these pieces, and for the impact app for Tia as a, a for shorthand, what we're starting with is just full survey. So starting with how what are the questions that you ask people. What is the logic and sequence of questions so that on the other end, once they've gone through that sequence of questions, they can be shown a dashboard of actions that they can take. And those actions are associated with civic projects or ecosystems that make sense for their situation. Both from a geographic perspective, these projects are actually accessible to them in their location, but also from a skills and versus like they have access to a smartphone? Do they have access to a vehicle? What are a, a taking stock of what they have to bring to the table, their skills, their knowledge, a genesis of where they're at in terms of that, and then also what they're interested in, what they actually want to part in. And by starting to refine how we gather that information, that's really the first step. And just a first version will just be a type form survey. Pretty simple. But from that, you can start to iterate on the logic of those questions and then also iterate on okay, here's this list of actions that we can show to someone and what are the next steps? Like we want it to make, we don't want to just be a list. It's actually, okay, here's step-by-step and ideally direct integrations with of these projects and ecosystems where it's a seamless flow from putting the app into onboarding into the you know, basing ecosystem and actually participating in some regenerative work on, on the ground on a, on a project in their area where that flow is is seamless. So that would be the first step is just, yeah, starting with the survey, iterating on it. And I think ideally I am later this year looking at fall where we would have some beta app that's pretty basic to actually test. But ahead of that, it's just going to be testing using type form and then surveys and things like that. Yeah, yeah, like discovery mode of just put, putting it together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to me, it it sounds like it maybe bounties are not not the right word, but it's like matching those skills, and then there eventually there would be bounties or whether it be jobs or hourly or some sort of crediting system. It's for an eco. If there's an ecosystem that has bounties where they're actively putting up bounties for this type of work, and they're actively actually paying people, then we'll send them there for the goodwill that makes sense, but not necessarily incorporating bounties into itself. It's really onboarding. It's just flowing people into other ecosystems. And then as we developed our own methodology for smallholder stewardship and based on agroforestry, for the folks that make where that makes sense, if they're if they have the land, if they have the they're already a smallholder farmer, if that situation makes sense for them, then we can onboard them into our own methodology that's using some of these various methodologies to create eco credits on regen network as well. So that's kind of the other piece of what we're working on. That's a really good transition point to, uh, I want to talk about the methodology writing and the regen network. But one question, and you and I may have talked about in the past, but have you seen field agent? I just dropped it in the chat there. The, the, field agent. This might be just nope. a an interesting model. I feel like you could actually somehow adopt or get on their network. They, these are retailers that if Walmart wants someone to go check like an in-cap display or they want to check customer service or they want to check prices, they send people sure, all over sure. the world basically yeah. to do little bounties. They say, okay, I want you yeah. to go do something. 
And it, mm-hmm. so to me, it's like a perfect use case, like for what you're doing, for what Eco Labs is doing in the TI app. So just, right. just wanted to flag that for you. Beautiful. Yeah, I'll check that out. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I think to, to me, I think like, it's like bringing these two communities together. There's stuff already happening, like in normie world or traditional TradFi world that we can actually just merge into or be a branch to or provide better solutions to. Because mm-hmm. why couldn't a field agent join Eco Labs and go do a, a task or have the skill set to do something that, that you're trying to do with regenerative action or restoration? And also, I mean, taking a look at what does the flow look like for someone who wants to be a field agent and use this platform? How do they get started? How do they, what does that onboarding process look like where they're basically signing up to do random things? That's uh, if you, like, if you um, scroll down their website, like I just noticed like the you're in good company part from Fortune 500 to Main Street USA on the homepage, like all, mm-hmm. almost all those companies, right, are going to need carbon credits. So why couldn't... Mm-hmm. Right. Those are already like where it's built in and the tell our field agents or our customers are actually helping create the regenerative change. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So that this is a piece that, that's really top of mind and that will be a big focus in the coming couple months for GoLabs is really taking a hard look at where the market is for these emerging ecological assets um, and doing so we're we received a, a, a NSF National Science Foundation grant to do customer discovery, and from starting in February into middle of March, we'll be doing a hundred discovery interviews. Or stakeholder discovery is another way to think of it too, because sometimes you might be talking to people who are actually customers, but they're really relevant to gather some d- data information around. But what we really want to think out and talk to and gather data around is what is the currency for some of these companies around obtaining carbon credits or what's their appetite for looking outside of just carbon based eco credits these are pioneering innovative types of assets that that still that kind of fall into meeting sustainability goals what does that actually look like and i'm curious like what if you have any perspective there and Something I guess like offline is would love to any anyone you think we should talk to and interview during that time would definitely uh, appreciate you sending them our way. Yeah, what immediately comes to mind is Sisteo, Olivia's app. It's not blockchain or Web3 at this point, but she's working on consumer, originally consumer behavior change. How do we get households to change behaviors around recycling and energy use and travel and consumption? And what she's settled on, at least the last time I spoke with her, is basically going inside corporations and getting incentives. Like the same practices actually benefit the corporation. If they are more resourceful, if they waste less, if they use less energy, if they bring more money to the bottom line, just like in your household. So her theory is now, instead of trying to go household to household, is starting in the corporations and having those same corporations on that list right there, Coca-Cola and General Mills and Walmart. So that to me weeds Mm -hmm. to the question of like carbon credits, carbon projects and local resilience. All these big corporations have supply chains across the globe. So these are people too, right? The clerk at Walmart, Mm -hmm. the manager at Walmart is a person who like, we, we had a call, Basin had a call with before the holiday and they, their employees care about the pollination and the bees in the March practice was to destroy the beehives. They considered them like pests, right? And danger. And they used to come in and exterminate, but an employee like rallied and said, look, like these are pollinators we need to actually support. And Walmart set up a... They call it the pollinator hotline. It's a 1-800 number that any Walmart customer or any Walmart employee can call and they come in and they appropriately manage, they relocate the beehive rather than exterminate it. So I think treating corporations, like like they already are by law people, (laughs) unfortunately, but treating the people like people, right? And that they're, that they Mm -hmm. have a lot of the same hopes and goals and dreams us outside like regenerators and sustainability people and so I think that would be a good place to start. Beautiful. Thank you. But talk about the agro methodology that you are working on for Regen Network, mm-hmm. Regen Registry. Yeah. So we uh, spent a few months in HR Columbia and uh, in the la- end of last year. And we basically w- tried, we 
came in with the intention of wanting to scope out what a methodology could look like for small scale smallholder farmers. And it was clear that a lot of the projects there were doing syntropic agroforestry. But ahead of that, going coming into it, we had actually uh, wanted to think about this from the perspective of an adaptive. So this methodology, which is basically the process you're going through of what practices are being implemented on the ground and how are you measuring and verifying that those practices are being done. We It is title, current working title of the methodology, and this is still under development. It's early stages. We've just submitted a concept note to Regen Network, which is really the first sort of step. But we want to get lots of feedback and go through a peer review process on this methodology and really flesh it out in as detailed as possible how this process and methodology would actually flow and work. But it is adaptive agroforestry. The idea being we're focusing in on the principles of agroforestry being applied, the core element, things like the pruning of mass and covering of soil. Is soil being covered? Is are is there a diversity of species? Are is there a reduction in inputs like fertilizers and herbicides and pesticides, etc.? Also, water use. If you're practicing agroforestry, you should actually be using less water because the health, soil is becoming healthier and retaining more water. And so by focusing you know, in on these principles of what's being applied and trying to verify that those are being, that's happening, the species and specific practices can be adapted to the context. So to the bioregion, to the specific zones that project is in, the you're still verifying that those principles are being applied, but Maybe like we have the pilot projects in Colombia and Barichara, but then we also have, we're working with a gentleman who's been teaching regenerative agriculture in Zambia for the last 15 years. He's doing a small pilot project in Zambia. And then we have some pilot projects in Brazil. So as we test these, this methodology out in various places around the world, we can see whether or not that's, this is it's kind of untested, whether or not this is possible, but instead of having this specific recipe applied, uh, it's adapting it and being able to use the mentioned earlier in terms of sensing techniques from human sensing and satellite imagery being applied, OT sensors being applied. So to basically verify that the practices are happening as opposed to the specific outcome. So we're not focused on how much carbon is being sequestered. We're just trying to prove is agroforestry happening and to what extent. And it sounds like you've taken a step further of what's universal like applicable to any type of project, right? like in the, mm-hmm. and then you break down, you separate out the site specific or bio region or eco region stuff separately. So it can be applied right. locally. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Cause it, pretty much it, even if the species are different and the exact purposes you're implementing are, could be wildly different from in different areas, you're still generally doing similar, you're following similar principles. You're still going to be pruning and you're still going to be covering the soil. You're still going to be planting a large diversity of species very close together. And it, yeah, by looking at some of those things, we should have an indication that agroforestry is actually happening. Well, I, so I really appreciate all your work and all, all your exploration and all the different projects you're involved in. What's the best way for people to, to onboard? It, it all, you have a bunch of different stuff happening right now. Where, where do you need the most help? Or do you need people to fill out that form or to do the onboarding? Do you, you know, do you need people on the team? And congratulations, by the way, on the National Science Foundation grant and the um, what was future, future quest. quest. Yeah, beginning. Yeah, end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Way to go. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, right now we're one of the projects in this alpha round of Gitcoin, so contributing there. Cool. Yeah, but uh, that would be the biggest thing. And yeah, we don't have our sort of MVP beta survey out just yet. They'll probably get out there in yeah two months or so. And then it'll be a big thing is just getting as much feedback on that. But if anyone there has any insights on regenerative work, methodology development, right now we are actively wanting to get as much feedback on our first draft of our of agroforestry methodology and yeah, get as much input on that. So that would be the call to action is just uh, Twitter is the best place. Uh, our link tree is there. So you can find all of our telegram group chat is going to be a place to ask questions and you know, website and all that. But yeah, just using the link tree will get you where you need want to go. Cool. And your agroforestry methodology is being submitted to Regen Registry, which is a, obviously a blockchain Web3 enabled carbon and eco credit natural capital registry. Is yours going to be outcome based or stewardship based or based or what we're, we're going to be a kind of a combo of both? 
So it is, it's really focusing on practices, stewardship based in the beginning. The idea is to basically be gathering a lot of data around the verification of those practices so that we can actually develop Brit methodology down the road that's outcomes-based and start to make basically the idea is it's practice-based credit with claim to any future-based outcomes. Cool. I love that. So I'd love to unpack that with you at, in another session. Add, keep adding me to those calendar invites and we'll... Sure thing. That, that'd be fun. Cool. Sounds great. Seb, th thanks uh, for coming. I've dropped the link up in the chat above. I'll just dra drop it in here again just so people have it. I just posted our link. Okay, cool. As well. Awesome. But yeah, please support EFO Labs and the work that Sev is doing. And we really appreciate your time. Sounds good. Will do. Cool. Timo, really appreciate you putting this up. Yeah, thanks for coming. Re really appreciate your work. Hey, yeah. Make sure to add it to your final ballot. Please make a donation to every single one. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. It's more about the number of votes and the number of donations that counts because that's what engages quadratic funding. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them.